one of the biggest struggles I think I'm facing as a mom is having your own child tell you something and you have absolutely no idea what it is. I feel defeated when I don't know what they're trying to say and now we have a crying child who just wants something or their basic needs met and defeated parents just trying to figure out what that is. What's baby's name? Baba. Parker. Madison's speech struggles started when she was really young. She always communicated with facial gestures and really only had a handful of single words, not even very understandable. So we waited for the group therapy to start. She definitely had a language explosion that summer of the group therapy. And she was talking a lot more and putting words together, but definitely not understandable. So we got through the group, the group therapy and then started individual therapy with Carrie. She took off with leaps and bounds and made a lot of progress in a short amount of time. She practiced her letter sounds at home and we played, we would play games and take turns saying words. And she's now graduated just, you know, earlier this year and she's talking nonstop and loving life and doing really well now. I, I, I work hard on my painting. Parker's delays were a little bit different than Madison's. Baba, Mike, Baba, Mike. By the time he was two, I just noticed a lot of differences. The way he moved his mouth was different. Parker had difficulty saying words and certain sounds and really struggled to get the words out. Um, so we noticed that instead of just giving him an expressive language delay, he ended up getting a diagnosis of apraxia of speech. He started group therapy, was beginning to use more words. He would attempt to possibly put two words together, but it was more of a mumble or just sounds together. He struggled just to share what he wanted to drink or wanted to eat. You know, even just simple words like juice that a kid might say or apple juice was really hard for Parker to say. During the language therapy group, um, he definitely got more words and I think more self-confidence in that I can say some of these words and I can do this. Even though Madison always knows what Parker has to say somehow, um, he still struggles. So the struggle of apraxia is still, you know, very, very prominent in our life right now. And I know there's a journey ahead of us for him, but he is doing amazing with the sounds that he's making and the way that he's moving his mouth now. and. Um, just proud of them. I'm just, they, they, they both, both of my kids have just done so well. And at the start of both of their journeys, I didn't know what to expect. And especially for Parker, I didn't know if he was ever going to talk correctly. I didn't know if he would ever say mama or dada correctly, but now he is. And that it makes my day every day when he says mommy or, or daddy, and it's clear as day. So as he continues to progress and I, I see those changes, it just, it makes me excited every time to just bring him here and walk through the door and watch through that window as he practices so hard, so. When I first heard about the clinic was through parents as teachers. I didn't think anything of it at first. One dime at the store, somebody walked up because her and I were communicating and said, excuse me, but what language is she speaking? And I looked down and I said, well, it's just the way she speaks right now. I said, we joke around and call it Mandanese, you know, with her name being Amanda. And then one night I went to put her to bed and she was t two and she was trying to tell mommy something. It took me till 10 o'clock that night Poor baby was trying to tell me she saw a police car at the top of the street that day. My memories from the clinic are really just a big colorful carpet and a glass wall. For a long time, I never thought about it. It never crossed my mind until it was my last year in graduate school here at Maryville um, when the Walkers so generously expanded the, the School of Health Professions. And as I sat there and listened to them, something was bringing back those memories of that glass wall and the big colorful carpet and i couldn't i couldn't nail it down i didn't know what this feeling was but the generosity from these two individuals to come and expand this program at maryville and just the speech and language aspect of it was just bringing something back to my memory so i had to call my mom that day and say you know hey where was it that i went to speech therapy when i was 30. And sure enough, it was the Walker Scottish Rite Clinic. She contacted her school and said, I just need to write them a thank you letter.
because I'm where I'm at because of them. Sorry. <laughs> And she had the blessings to meet Earl Walker himself and talk with him about her future and her plans and what she wanted to do for children before he passed. And that was an imprint on her heart. And I think it all started back when she was three. I was one of these kids at this clinic and little did I know I was gonna have kids that would end up at this clinic as well. They will forever be a part of me and I'll forever be thankful for everything they've done. Oh, it means the world to me. I mean, it it helped Mandy get where she wanted to be, and it also is doing the same for my grandchildren. It's just a really special place.